Hello folks, I am Gemma from Hoglet's Theatre and I am here today to take you on an epic adventure all the way around the world. It's been a funny old year, hasn't it? We haven't been able to travel. So we are going to go from here, right at the top of the world in cold Canada, all the way down through America, through Europe, up through Russia, down through Asia, hop over to Africa and we are going to finish our journey here it's sunny Australia so we're going to have to pack a lot of different things we are going to use the power of imagination to travel all the way around the world now Phileas Fogg traveled all the way around the world in 80 days so the story says we're gonna beat that we're gonna travel around the world in 30 minutes yes 30 minutes we're gonna go from there to there we're gonna go and see landmarks we're gonna go on safari we're gonna travel across oceans all without leaving our living room so I hope you're ready we're going to start our journey, as I said, up in Canada with a lovely Canadian folktale. And when we finish our journey and we're all exhausted, we will round it off with a lovely story from Australia. So, are you ready? Are you feeling brave? This is going to be an epic adventure. So we're going to start with the story all the way from Canada called The Rabbit and the moon man. It was midwinter and the snow was falling heavy and fast. Like all the other animals in the forest, Rabbit and his grandmother were hungry. But Rabbit was quite resourceful. He had a good idea. He made some traps and every night, just as the sun was setting, he would sneak out into the forest and lay these traps. He would return home to his burrow and the next morning he would check them to see what he had to feast on today. The first morning he went to check his traps. They were empty. How could this be? <sighs> Confused and a bit angry, Rabbit went home and told his grandmother, I think somebody's stealing from our traps, he said. Hmm, said his grandmother, maybe you should get up earlier and check them. So that's what he did. The next morning, he rose just before the dawn, raced to check his traps and once again they were empty. Now this happened day after day after day. Rabbit got up earlier and earlier and earlier and still he could not catch who was stealing the food from his traps. One morning, Rabbit got to his traps just as the stars were glistening and on the freshly laid snow next to one of his traps he could see a very strange footprint. Actually, it wasn't really a footprint at all. It looked more like a moonbeam. It was long and thin and glistening. Mm, I've had enough of this, thought Rabbit. And he went back to his burrow and got a bowstring. He tied one end into a snare and returned back to the trap. He buried one end underneath the freshly laid snow and kept hold of the other end and laid in wait behind a tree stump. He waited as the sun went down and the moon came out. Fright, said Rabbit. Then all of a sudden the moon disappeared and the sky was black. Apart from the twinkling of stars, Rabbit began to become afraid. Then he heard the noise of crashing coming through the trees behind him. He looked to see a blinding light glowing through the trees. It was getting closer and closer to his traps. <gasps> what is this strange creature? This must be the thief, thought Rabbit. So he pulled hard on his snare and ouch, came a sound from the traps. The frightened Rabbit crept closer and closer towards the glowing light, but it was so bright it made his eyes sore. Rabbit ran to the nearest stream and dabbed his eyes, but still they were burning from the bright glowing light. Rabbit returned to his trap, still blinking, nose twitching. He tried to put out the light by throwing a snowball, but the light gave off so much heat, the snowball melted before it even hit the creature. By this time, Rabbit was furious, so he picked up handfuls of mud and split. How dare you, came a voice from beneath the glowing light. I am the man in the moon and you have covered me in mud. Oh, 
Rabbit was petrified. He didn't know what to do. So instead he ran home to tell his grandmother. The man in the moon? The man in the moon, said his grandmother. Go back there and free him at once or you'll bring bad luck upon us all. Cautiously, Rabbit returned to the trap where he'd caught the man in the moon. Hello, shouted Rabbit. Hello, called back the man in the moon. I will let you go, said Rabbit, under one condition. You never ever come and steal my food ever again. I swear by my light, I will never again steal your food, said the man in the moon. If you free me, I will return to my place within the stars. So Rabbit crept closer his eyes burning again, his nose twitching with the heat. His shoulders began to burn too, because it was so hot, but still he nibbled and gnawed and bit through the rope. Whoosh! Like that, the man in the moon kept his promise and returned to his place in the stars. Now, neither Rabbit nor the man in the moon left this encounter unscathed. If you look very closely when there's a full moon, You'll still see the mud splattered on the man in the moon's face. And sometimes there is no moon at all. And it is said that the man in the moon leaves the sky, comes back to earth and tries to wash the muck from his face. But it never works. Rabbit was never the same either. His eyes were still sore and pink. And if you look to this day, Rabbit's children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, all white rabbits still have eyes. They still twitch their noses when they're frightened and they all have yellow fur on their shoulders where it was singed by the man in the moon. The end. Now what a lovely story was that. So that is a folk tale from Canada and this is where we're going to start our journey. But through our journey we're going to be using our bodies a lot so we are going to warm ourselves up. So I want you to make yourselves as wide as you possibly can. Touch one side of the room, touch the other side of the room and stretch. Oh. Now we're going to make ourselves as tall and thin as we possibly can. So try and touch the ceiling with your fingertips and keep your tiptoes on the floor. Can you make yourselves any taller? No. Right. Now we're going to be as small as possibly can. Think of a mouse or even smaller, an ant or a beetle, and we're going to curl ourselves up into a tiny, tiny ball. Now we're going to grow and make ourselves as round as we possibly can. So big round shoulders, rounded legs, a big round face. Fantastic. Now we are going to make ourselves as was wobbly as we possibly can. We're gonna pretend that we're, ooh, a jellyfish. Like we have no bones in our body whatsoever, so we're really, really, really floppy. Oh, that feels quite nice, doesn't it? Now we're gonna be as spiky as we possibly can. So spiky fingers, spiky toes, spiky elbows, spiky shoulders, spiky chins, spiky noses, spiky ears. Those ears need some work, come on. Spikier ears. Fantastic. And now we're just going to shake every part of our bodies. We're going to shake our arms, shake our legs, shake our tummies, shake our hair, shake our bums, shake our faces. Oh, and have a nice big stretch. Are you ready for an adventure? Me too. So I thought, first of all, we would go on a sightseeing tour. We're going to go from Canada down to America. In fact, somewhere very specific in America, we are going to New York, just there. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go from New York over to Europe, over to Russia, over to China, and see some of the world's most incredible landmarks. We're not just going to see them, we are going to use our bodies to recreate them. So we'll do this one together. We're gonna start in New York. So what do you think of when you think of New York? I think of the Statue of Liberty. Here's a picture. Here she is. Now I'm going to give you five seconds and you can do it either by yourself or whoever else is in the room with you. You can get together and do it. 
And we are going to use our bodies to recreate the Statue of Liberty. Are you ready? So, one, two, three, four, five. Fantastic stuff. Well done, guys. So we're going to go across country and we're going to go to a huge, great, massive landmark on the other side of America. We are going to go to the Grand Canyon. <gasps> Look, isn't it huge? Should we all shout hello and see if it echoes? Hello! 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 So we are going to use our bodies and if there's anyone in the room with you, grab them and we're going to have five seconds to make ourselves into the Grand Canyon. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five! Fantastic stuff! Now, we're going to travel across the pond or across the Atlantic as they call it and we are going to head to England where I'm sure most of us who are watching this live and we're going to go to the capital of England we're going to go to London so how we're going to travel is we're going to do a great big jump are you ready one two three jump brilliant oh it's a bit chillier here in London isn't it so we're going to walk along the banks of the Thames and we are going to find one of London's most famous landmarks, Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament. So here's a picture of Big Ben. Are you ready? Five seconds to recreate Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament with a moving clock, uh, making this one harder, with your bodies. So off we go. One, two, three, four, five. Am I going the right way? Probably not. Ah, that's probably better. Fantastic stuff. Now we're going to leave London and we're going to go to Europe. So we're just going to do a little hop to the side. You ready? One, two, three. Oh. So now we're in a place called Brussels and we are going to recreate the Atonium. Hope I've said that right. It looks like something very scientific, like an atom. So it's a great big building. I'll show you a picture. So we're going to use our bodies to recreate this. Are you ready? This one's going to be very difficult. I don't know how I'm going to do it. So one, two, three, four, five. Brilliant. Well done, guys. So we're going to go from Brussels to Berlin. Lovely, chilly Berlin. I love Berlin. It's fantastic. So just a little hop. Are you ready? One, two, three, jump. Now there are so many amazing things to see in Berlin, but one of the most fantastic is the Brandenburg Gate. So I'm gonna show you a picture. So we are gonna make the gate together and it is huge. So you can either make the gate or you can make the horses on the top of it. The choice is yours. So if there's anyone else hanging around your house, rope them in now for this one because it's a good one to have extra bodies for. So after five, we are going to recreate the Brandenburg Gate with our bodies. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five. Wow, you guys are really good at this. I think we're going to have to make it a little bit more challenging, aren't we? So let's go from Berlin to beautiful Paris. Are you ready? Let's go. And I'm sure you can guess what we're going to see here in Paris. There are so many things to see here in Paris, but there is one that you can see just as you're landing. And it is beautiful. It's what sparkles in the night because it lights up with beautiful sparkling lights. And that is the Eiffel Tower. So, I'm going to give you five seconds to recreate the wonderful Eiffel Tower. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five. Now, we are going to now pretend to be the Eiffel Tower at night time and I want you to sparkle downwards. Are you ready? Let's go. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Brilliant stuff. Now, this one is going to be a bit tricky. Anyone feeling a bit warm? We're going to head to Barcelona. So. Let's go. You ready? One, two, three. Oh! Now, this is going to be a very strange one. We are going to recreate the very famous cathedral in Barcelona, Barcelona called the 
Sagrada Familia and it's very twisty and turny and beautiful. So here's a picture. Are you ready for this challenge guys? Off we go. One, two, three, four, five. Fantastic stuff. Oh, lovely. So we're going to stay in the lovely warmth of of southern Europe and we're gonna go from Spain all the way to Italy and this one's gonna be an easy one we are going to recreate the Leaning Tower of Pisa dun, 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 dun. so off we go one two three four five don't fall over don't fall over ah! oh dear my Leaning Tower of Pisa fell over oh no Maybe we should recreate something else, a bit safer. So we'll go from Pisa, we'll go south down to Rome, and we'll recreate the Colosseum. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, fantastic stuff. Now, we're going to leave Europe, and we're going to do a big northwards jump, and we're going to head to Moscow in Russia. Are you ready? It's going to be a bit of a jump. One, two, three, go. Oh. Ooh, it's a bit chillier here than it was in Italy, isn't it? <gasps> right then, so we are going to recreate the beautiful St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow. It's amazing. It looks like there's great big ice creams on the top. It's fantastic. I'll show you a picture. See what I mean? So let's recreate St. Basil's Cathedral. Are you ready? One, two three four five fantastic now for this next one we really need to work together we are going to find and recreate the biggest landmark on the planet it's so big you can see it from space can anyone guess what it is have a think if you know what it is shout it out that's right, the Great Wall of China. So let's take a jump to China. And I think we're gonna have to do this together, guys. So we're gonna put one hand on the wall, one hand reaching out to the camera, and see if we together can recreate the Great Wall of China. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I think we've just about done it. Should we check? Should we wave and see if they can see us in space? Yes, we did it! Well done! Now, whew, I think you need to give yourself a pat on the back for that one. That is the biggest landmark in the world! So we've got one final stop on our sightseeing tour before I take you all on the African safari. So I thought, as we're so close, why not go to India and we'll see the Taj Mahal. So are you ready? We're going to take a little sideways jump to India. One, two, three, jump! And we are going to recreate the beautiful Taj Mahal. I'd love to go there. It looks amazing. So are you ready? Let's do this. One, two, three, four, five. Fantastic guys, you have used your imagination so well and your bodies to make the most incredible landmarks ever. Now, sightseeing is good, but I think we need to have a bit more fun. Maybe run a bit more wild. And there is no place where there's more wild animals in the world than Africa. So, who fancies going on an African safari? Yeah, me too. So we're gonna jump all the way to Africa. Are you ready? One, two, three, jump! Now, because Africa is huge, it's a massive, massive continent full of the most wonderful creatures. I thought we would take a flying safari. Now the best way to fly is by bumblebee. So we're gonna shrink down to the size of a bumblebee. Are you ready? and we're gonna use our wings to fly about. So when I say fly, we are gonna buzz around like little bees. Bzzz. But when I say stop, I'm going to show you a letter. So I'll show you an example. So 
I'm going to we'll start with A or A. And I'm going to give you five seconds to make your bodies into an animal that begins with that letter. So you could be an ant, an aardvark, an anteater, an antelope. Um, oh, what else could you be? Um, an ape? The possibilities are endless. So we are going to buzz around like buzzy bumblebees. And when I say stop, I'm going to show you a letter. I'm going to make our bodies into an animal that begins with that letter. If you've got any big people around and you need some help, don't worry, rope them in. So are you ready, Bumbles? Let's go. Let's start buzzing. Stop. And our first letter is F or F. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five. I'm a frog. Anyone else a frog? What else could you be for an F? You could be um, a, a fawn, a little deer, a fox with a swishy tail. Oh, anyone, anything different from a frog or a fox or a fawn? If you are, shout it at the screen now. Brilliant. Fantastic ideas, guys. Off we go buzzing again. Let's go. <laughs> And the next one, now you're not allowed to stay a B at this one, is B or B, but you can't be a B. So five seconds, are you ready? Off you go. One, two, three, four, five. I'm a badger. I love a good grumpy badger. What else could you be for a B? You could be a badger or a butterfly. Anyone a beautiful butterfly? Great stuff. Or a bear. Urgh. So is there anyone that's not a badger or a bumblebee? Remember, no bumblebees. Or a butterfly or a bear. Shout it at the screen now if you are. Oh, you guys are good at this game. So off we go again. Are you ready to buzz? <gasps> Now this is a tricky one. You have five seconds to become a creature that begins with O or O. Oh. Off we go. One, two, three, four, five. I haven't quite got it off arms and legs, but I'm an octopus. Anyone else an octopus? If you are, put your tentacle up. Brilliant. So you could be an octopus or an ocelot, which is kind of jungle cat or an ostrich oh it's a tricky one isn't it is anyone something different from uh, an octopus or an ostrich or an ocelot if you are shout it at the screen now oh, i think i'm gonna have to make these really difficult because you guys are pretty good at this game are you ready to buzz again off we go stop now you have five seconds to become something that begins with E or F. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five. Who else is an elephant? So we have elephant or an emu. Or E is really, really hard, isn't it? It's, does anyone know an animal that, or became an animal that didn't be, that began with E that wasn't an emu or an elephant? Shout it out now. <sighs> Brilliant stuff. So we are gonna go for one more. Are you ready? So let's buzz. <laughs> Stop. So. Our final letter is M or M. Are you ready to become a creature that begins with M or M? You've got five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. I'm a mouse. Anyone else a mouse? You could be a mouse or a moose or a meerkat. What else 
begins with M. Monster! Did anyone go for monster? Not technically an animal, but I'll let you off on that one. Was anyone anything that wasn't a mouse, a moose, a monster, or a meerkat? Shout it out if you were now. Oh my goodness! What an incredible array of animals we've seen here in Africa. But remember our challenge, we have to get around the world in 30 minutes and we're running out of time. So now we are here in Africa and we need to be all the way over there, Australia. So somehow we are going to have to cross the Indian Ocean. Now, how could we do it? Ah, I've got it. I am, as well as being a storyteller, an expert sea captain. So, climb aboard my boat and we will travel across the Indian Ocean. Now, obviously, this is an adventure, so this journey is going to be fraught with peril. First, we're going to be attacked by crabs that want to pinch us. Pinch, 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 pinch. Then we're going to be attacked by octopuses that want to tickle us. Tickle, 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 tickle. Then we're going to be attacked by sharks that want to eat us. Snap, snap, snap. And then, finally, we're going to be in swallowed by a giant sea monster that wants to swallow us whole. Ah! When that happens, we're going to hide. So if there's anyone else in the room with you, go and grab them now because we need them to make a boat. Like all good seafaring fellow, we are going to make a boat like this. We're going to hold hands and we're going to sway as if we're on the waves. And we're going to sing a sea shanty as we go. And the song goes like this. On my little boat, as happy as can be, sailing across the deep blue sea. And I want to see some drama here, so after that we go, <gasps> I hear a noise, an even bigger, <gasps> what can it be? And first, we're going to be attacked by those pinchy crabs that want to pinch us, but they don't pinch us too hard that it hurts. Then we're going to be attacked by that tickly octopus that's going to tickle us. Then that giant shark that wants to eat us. Then that ginormous sea monster that wants to swallow us whole. And when that happens, we all hide. Are you ready? Off we go. One, two, three. On my little boat, as happy as can be, sailing across the deep blue sea. <gasps> I hear a noise. <gasps> What can it be? It's a crab and it's going to pinch me. Pinch, 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 pinch. Ow, ow. Oh, is everyone okay? Has everyone got 10 fingers, 10 toes, one nose? They always go for the nose for some reason to crabs. I've got some spares if anyone needs one. We good? Okay then, off we go again. One, two, three. On my little boat, as happy as can be sailing across the deep blue sea <gasps> i hear a noise <gasps> what can it be it's an octopus and it's coming to tickle me <laughs> oh get off Ooh. is everyone okay no one too wobbly oh thank goodness for that off we go again one two three on my little boat, as happy as can be, sailing across the deep blue sea. <gasps> I hear a noise. <gasps> what can it be? It's a shark and it's going to eat me! Snap! 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 Oh, help! Help! It's got me! It's got me by the leg! Carry on without me! Oh, oh, oh that was close. Has everyone still got two arms, two legs, one head? Now is not the time to lose your head. <sighs> now nothing could be worse than a shark attack, could it? Or could it? Off we go again. One, two, three. On my little boat, as happy as can be, sailing across the deep blue sea. <gasps> I hear a noise. <gasps> what can it be? It's the sea monster, and it's going to swallow me! Everybody hide! Oh. Is everyone okay? Did anyone get swallowed? Oh, thank goodness for that. Let's check. See, see, 
if it's gone. Look that way. If it's gone, give me a thumbs up. Oh, thank goodness. Look that way. Can't see anything. We're all clear. Look that way. It's coming back. Oh no, that was just a whale. Look behind you. Oh, we're safe. Oh, well, thank goodness. How are we going to get to Australia now? Look at the state of our ship. It's all broken and ruined. Right. Think, Gemma. Think. Right. Everyone find a piece of driftwood or a barrel or something to sit on, something that will take your weight. And are you feeling strong? I hope so, because we are going to have to row all the rest of the way to Australia. So show me your muscles. <clears throat> So we're going to sing a song as we go to keep us motivated. And I think it's a song you'll probably all know. We're going to sing Row Your Boat. So we're going to row our boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Gently down the stream. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to ah! scream. Gently down the river. If you see a polar bear, don't forget to shiver. Gently past the shore. If you see a lion, don't forget to roar. Gently round the bay. If you see a pirate ship, row the other way. Then gently out to sea, if you see a big blue whale, ask him back for tea. Now, are you ready? Off we go. One, two, three. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the river. If you see a polar bear, don't forget to shiver. Ooh. Row, row, row your boat gently past the shore. If you see a lion, don't forget to roar. Rawr. Row, row, row your boat gently round the bay. If you see a pirate ship, quick row the other way. Row, row, row your boat gently out to sea. If you see a big blue whale, ask him back for tea. Oh, I think we've made it. Yes, that's the shores of Australia. Thank goodness for that. Oh. So guys, we have traveled all the way from Canada, through America, through Europe, through Russia, through Asia, a safari right the way around Africa, a treacherous journey across the Indian Ocean. And we finally made our destination, which is Australia. <sighs> so while we're here, sit down, make yourselves comfortable, and I'm gonna to finish today by telling you the lovely Australian folktale of how the kangaroo got his pouch. One day, Kangaroo sat watching as her joey played in the long grass. She heard a noise behind them. It was an old blind wombat trying to make his way to the river. Can I help you? asked the kangaroo. Oh, I am so old and so tired and so thirsty and I have no friends to take me to the river. Oh, don't be silly, said the kangaroo. I'll take you to the river. Take hold of my tail and I will guide you to the water. Joey! Joey! said Kangaroo. Now, little Joey, make sure you follow me and don't get distracted. My arms are too small and I can't carry you. So off they set to the watering hole. They walked and walked. And obviously, as all young children do, Joey got distracted and scampered off following butterflies chasing lizards, having a wonderful time in the sun. Finally, they reached the river. Kangaroo guided the wombat to the river and let him drink. She looked around in the long grass for her joey, but she couldn't see him anywhere. But then, all of a sudden, she saw a hunter. As she couldn't see her joey, she knew he must be safe. But the wombat was in danger. He was so old and so blind, the hunter would surely take him. So, the kangaroo thought, what shall I do? And she stamped her big, loud foot, getting the hunter's attention. And then she ran. 
She ran and ran as fast as she can into the bush, darting this way and that way. The hunter followed her and followed and followed as closely as he could until he became so exhausted he just gave up and went home. The kangaroo retraced her footsteps back to the river, but the wombat was gone. But there, in the shade of the gum tree, laid asleep her little joey, safe and sound. Oh, kangaroo sat to have a drink. As she did, the sky spirits came down. Our sky father, they said, came to earth in the form of a wombat. He was looking for the kindest animal. You, out of all the animals in the outback, helped him. You, kangaroo, have the kindest of hearts. So our sky father would like to give you a gift. They presented the kangaroo with an apron, with a pocket, made out of the bark of the eucalyptus tree. As she put on the apron, it blended into her fur, and it was an apron no longer. Instead, she had a great big pouch with which she could carry her joey. And now, even to this day, kangaroos carry their baby joeys in their pouch. The end. <sighs> well, I don't know about you guys, but I am exhausted after that adventure. Thank you for joining me on a trip around the world. I hope you had as much fun as I did. So, from me, Gemma, take care, stay safe, and have a fantastic time. Bye guys, thank you for joining me. Bye, bye.